What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this Craftsman Lawn Mower and the problem is that I just picked it off the curb for free and I don't know anything about it. The worst part is that while I was trying to explain a few things about this mower, I made it worse. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it, and hopefully we can fix whatever I messed up. In this video, we try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information about these options, you're more than welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. And if I get enough interest, I'll make a video about it, answering all your questions and concerns. I saw an ad for some free lawn equipment, and this is one of them. They basically gave away everything a homeowner would need to do their own lawn. I'm guessing they hired someone to do their lawn instead. The only problem is that this is one of two mowers they were giving away, but they didn't mention if this one even worked, so that's what we're going to try to figure out. The first thing I'm going to do is look it over and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it. I do see some rust on the deck above the rear door where the paint is peeling badly and along the front edge around the plastic cover for the self-propel, but I don't see any real damage to the deck. The brake cable anchor has a hose clamp on it, but the cable itself looks to be almost brand new, and the best part is it works just fine, so I'm not worried about changing it. If I remove the oil dipstick, you can see there's oil on it, but to get a good read on its level, I'm going to wipe it clean first and then reinstall it back into the engine. I know it's difficult to see with the glare, but the oil is almost to the full mark and it's also in decent condition for once. That means someone took decent care of this engine, so we may not need to repair anything to get it to run again. Now after inspecting the gas tank, it's bone dry, so it hasn't been used in quite a while. The last thing we're going to do is put some gasoline in the tank and try starting it. That way we don't waste too much time diagnosing if it'll even start. So I've gotten in trouble with some of my viewers for over priming this type of carburetor in some of my past videos. So I'm going to follow the directions on the cover and only press it three times and then we'll try starting it. Unfortunately, it did not start, but it probably hasn't been used in a long time. So this time, I'm going to overprime it out of desperation, and hopefully we can get it started. Either that or we end up flooding the engine. Surprisingly, it started and ran just fine, and the self-propel also seems to be working quite well, although I noticed that the front wheels have a lot of drag on them, which means the drive system is probably working pretty hard to get the wheels to spin. So I want to inspect the priming system and find out why it didn't start when pressing it only three times, but it started after pressing it an excessive amount. The first thing I want to do is remove the air filter and its cover, and to get a good look at the throat of the carburetor, we need to remove this metal plate. With the metal plate out of the way, we can see the throat of the carburetor and where the fuel sprays into it. Then I'm going to press the primer bulb and see what happens. As you can see, gasoline is forced into the throat of the carburetor every time I press it. It's weird because pressing it three times should be more than enough fuel to start the engine, and pressing it ten times which just means you have to pull the rope a lot more to get it to start because you're basically flooding the engine with gasoline. Now, I don't know if that's the correct amount of fuel that's supposed to be forced into the throat for every press of the primer bulb, so I'm going to remove the air filter base and look at the priming system. That way we're both on the same page as to how it works. After removing the base, you can see the gasket that seals against the carburetor's face. This gasket is very important because it's meant to seal between the carb and the back of the base, which if you can see has an air passage from the primer bulb area. Air is then forced into the passage, sealed by the gasket, and then forced into this hole on the face of the carb. That air then goes down to the bowl of the carburetor and forces the gasoline in the bowl to move up through the emulsion tube and into the throat of the carburetor so there's extra fuel to get the engine started. If I force air into the hole, you can see it working. 
some of the problems with this design is if the gasket isn't sealing with the back of the base and not allowing air to force the gasoline out of the bowl. The other problem could be a bowl gasket that doesn't seal allowing the air from the primer bulb to leak past the bowl gasket instead of forcing gasoline into the throat of the carburetor. I don't see any real problems here so I'm going to replace the base and when you do don't forget to make sure that this elbow slides back on the emissions tube otherwise your engine could be breathing in unfiltered air. Once the base is back on and the bolts are tight, I'm going to press the primer bulb a few times just to make sure it still works, and this is when things go terribly wrong. For some reason, the primer bulb isn't forcing air into the carb and not priming the engine with any gasoline, so it's not going to start, and it looks like I've just caused the problem I was trying to point out. That means I need to take it apart again and see what happened to it. The only thing that I could guess is that I've disturbed the gasket somehow and I've got an air leak. As you can see, if I force air into the hole from earlier, it's still working, so that means it must be a gasket issue. I then tried to reseat the base one more time using a different torque setting on the drill and in a different pattern, but yet again, it's still not working. That means I've got to go to plan B. After taking the base off, this time I'm going to put a thin layer of gasket maker on the area where the air passage seals against the gasket. Don't forget to work it around the opening of the hole as well and try not to get any of it near the hole. I'll then let it set up for a bit, then I'll reinstall the base. I don't remember how much time I waited, but I did just let it tack up a bit. Just be careful and don't let it cure before replacing the base. When you do reinstall it, try not to disturb the gasket maker. I'm not going to do a test prime just yet as the gasket maker is still setting up. In the meantime, I'm going to work on a few other issues such as lubricating the wheels. This is something a lot of people overlook, including myself, but this will make it a lot easier to push around. And since this is a self-propelled mower, it will also lessen the strain on the engine. I'm going to use some lithium grease on these wheels, but I would use whatever you have available. Some lube is better than no lube. Yes, some types of lube could attract dirt and cause some wear, but I'd rather have some dirty grease than metal on metal contact. I would do this about once a year, and by that time you should be able to tell if the lube you're using is working well, or if you need to switch to a different type. While I'm here, I'm also going to spray the height adjusters so they're a little easier to move. By the looks of it, these have never been lubricated. If you don't want to do this part, I don't blame you as most people just set their height and never change it. So the front wheels have a lot more drag than the rear ones, so they'll benefit the most from this sort of maintenance. This is going to be a bit more in-depth than just spraying where the wheels rotate because we also have to lubricate where the axles pass through their supports, not only on the gear side, but the other side as well. The height adjusters on the front wheels are a lot harder to move than the others, so later on I might change over to something more substantial than heavy duty silicone. This also shows you how much corrosion is present in the driveline. At least you can spray the adjusters anytime you want without having to take anything off, so it makes it a lot more convenient to maintain. To lubricate the back side of the supports, there's nothing you need to take off. Just lift up on the deck and spray where the axles pass through the deck. The moment I sprayed the supports, I could tell an immediate improvement in the amount of drag in the driveline. This was definitely the reason why this thing was so hard to push around. There's one more thing I want to address before we try priming the carb, and that's the rear door. For some reason, there's no tension on it to keep it against the deck. Now, this isn't a big deal as the mulching plug is there to keep grass clippings from flying out the back, but it's not supposed to be this loose. It looks like the springs that help keep it closed have let go from their anchors. I hate to say it, but I really don't pay too much attention to this area, so I'm not really sure how these are supposed to be anchored. But I think the ends of the springs are supposed to be resting on top of the deck. That means I need to remove the bolts that pass through them, and then reset the ends of the spring, and then reinstall the bolts. I'm sure there's a better way of moving these springs to their resting positions, like using some sort of a hook, but I'm just going to use my pliers instead. Once they're sitting back on the deck, I'll then reinstall the bolts. Once the springs are back into the right locations and the bolts have been replaced, you can see the rear door will now close with some tension against the back of the deck. So I waited a few hours just for good measure to make sure the gasket maker isn't going to be ruined by the gasoline and it's now finally time to test to see if it's sealing the air passage. After just pressing it once, you can see a stream of gasoline come out of the emulsion tube and that means that our fix worked. The next thing to do is put everything back on the engine and try starting it. I really wasn't planning on this being the purpose of this video, but at least we know how to temporarily fix the issue.
so I was able to fix the problem that I caused from taking off the air filter base. Now the real fix for this is to replace the gasket. However, if it's your mower, then this method works just fine. I have also heard of people doubling up the gasket so that there's no chance of an air leak. So another option as to why the primer might not be working is that the primer bulb itself may have cracks in it and isn't able to force any air into the carburetor. If that happens, just replace the bulb. Now the bulbs don't last forever, so at some point in its lifetime, there's a good chance that it's going to need to be changed. Now, most mowers don't use primer bulbs anymore, instead opting for an auto choke system, but over time, those can have issues as well. So my question is, would you rather get a mower that has an auto choking system so you don't have to worry about pressing a primer bulb to start a cold engine, or would you rather have a primer bulb? Personally, I don't like primer bulbs, and I don't mind auto choke systems, but if I had to choose, I really don't have an opinion, so I guess it really doesn't matter to me. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.